Welcome to part two of securing Sugar Grove from Modus. And take a look at the terminals that are in here. Okay, well, first of all, we got this little uh, bathroom, shower room over here for the people working on site that couldn't go home. Uh, we got a little meeting room, and we've be we've seen the server room over there, or the mainframe room, whatever you want to call it. Now we've got multiple desks here. And they've got these blue signs. Most of them are broken, but occasionally you can find stuff like power grid. Little break area over there. Come down here. We've got another broken one, but we got SIGINT service uh, system terminal. We'll look at that in a minute. We got some holotapes here from Cryptozoids or Zooids. I don't know. And we go down a little bit further. We got another holotape here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And another uh, terminal here, but I think this is the same terminal that's up there. Let's take a quick look here. So we can see um, Orbunculum Diagnostic Check. Let's see if that says the same thing up there. Yes, okay. Uh, so we'll upload that tape here in just a minute. But first of all, I have no idea what that means up there on that board. Like maybe this means something and I don't know what it is. Like, And I'm just not seeing it, but I, I have, again, I don't see anything. Uh, let's listen to... Where's that single holotape? Down there. Okay. We'll listen to this one first, then we'll come back to the uh, cryptids. I'm William Breyer, investigative reporter for the Charleston Herald. I'm currently standing just outside the security fencing of one of several horn ride industrial sites that have cropped up around the area in recent months. I'm here tonight to try and get some answers about what has become known in certain circles as. Motherload Project. Could this be the answer local mining families have been looking for? A series of new mining projects that could reinvigorate the local economy. Or as the environmental groups have suggested, could these be a fresh set of toxic disposal sites poisoning the ground beneath our feet? At the very least, according to local experts, the area's recent increase in seismic events can almost certainly be tied to Sites. Now I'm here to see for myself what's really going on. I've just made my way up to a small gap in the first line of fencing. The security here is intense. Barbed wire, armed guards, feels like a war zone. I'm making my way over a small ridge and I... Mother of God! Ground shaking and... Oh my God. What is that? Hey, you! This is private property! Shit, it's that reporter. Jesus. He's got a gun! Gun? Wait, this isn't a- ah! Okay, so a few things real quick. Bill Breyer, he was a reporter for the Charleston Herald. We actually saw his office when we were in the building the first time around. It's the one with the flowers in front of it because he was killed while trying to investigate the mother load. The mother load was an automated mining project created by Hornrett Industrial where they're basically building this mole machine that would dig through the ground, constantly chewing up rock, picking up ore and refining it as it was going along. Or not refining it, but at least getting rid of the, the low yield ore and carrying back only the stuff that you could actually use uh, to create... Uh, well, basically, whenever it comes up, you can get iron ore and stuff out of it, like that out of it. Anyway, uh, along with that, I've noticed the sheer number of cigarettes that you can find around here. And you have to imagine that this place must have been smoky as hell back when it was operating. I mean, look at this. We found all those ones over there, all the ones on the individual desks. There's so much booze. They were constantly just uh, boozing it up, smoking up. This place must have just smelled awful. Anyway... Uh, cryptozoids, and uh, let's start with the oldest one here, Grafton Monster sighting from uh, September 27th. Beverly Solomon, cryptid analyst, 92777. Grafton Monster witness report. Well, this is from one of those spelunkers that roam the hills looking for abandoned mining claims. Can you imagine? Well, the classic four foot wide shoulders, headless profile, deep sonorous cry, they got a good glance at it. The witness didn't know what it was. The description is very clear. It came out when she started playing mouth harp, apparently. I'm gonna go out to look. Maybe that sound is the key. Okay, next one up is October 4th, the Snallygaster. Beverly Solomon, cryptid analyst, 
10-4-77. Snallygaster witness report. Another interesting tidbit from the locals, this time about the Snallygaster. This one's for you, Teddy. All right, so the witness overheard a loud, shrieking sound and was rushed by a dark shape in the woods. It was uh, leaping at them, or maybe flying. They took shelter in an old German settler's barn and it couldn't get at them, which is what really interested me. It screamed and hollered outside all night until dawn, but they knew the seven-pointed star on the wall outside would keep them safe. Yikes. Guess I know what my next tattoo's gonna be. Of course, the Grafton Monster and um, Snallygaster that we face in, the, in Appalachia in the Fallout universe were created by West Tech at their uh, Huntersville location. So we got a uh, cryptid sighting Wendigo from October 25th? Are we assuming that this is from the from 2076 maybe? Beverly Solomon, nope. cryptid analyst. 10, Apparently after the bombs. Wendigo witness report. Ooh, this is a spooky tale. Okay, so this is my own personal sighting. I was up at the ski lodge this past week, enjoying some well-deserved R&R. I guess I can never really be off the clock, though, because I happened to see something hunched on the slopes ahead of me. I thought it was some old coat, you know? I was moving pretty fast, so I was just trying to avoid it. Anyhow, it just unfurled as I get close. Must have been ten feet tall, but just all skin and bones like a dead dog. It had a deer's skull cracked open in its hands from the fresh kill it was eating. And as I go by, I get this powerful cold feeling through my bones. I thought to myself, you know, Bev, you really lucked out getting that tattoo before coming out here on this trip. I can't imagine what kind of things I'm going to see next. All right, uh, let's see here. So I think that was just um, a mistake on Bethesda's part because... If she'd been up there the previous week at the ski lodge, she would definitely have had something to say about the, the bombs coming down. Anyway, uh, SIGINT system analysis. Uh, run or bunculum diagnostic check. Hub T25 north. Uh, and then we see we got north, south, east, and west. And we've got all these listening devices, some of which are still active. So effectively, this was part of their whole system intelligence. They had these sensors all over Appalachia. And th that might be what those... Uh, Dishes are that we've got coming out of trees and stuff like that out there. Uh, stored documents. From uh, August 19th, 2077, external contractors. From Commander Whitney Gould to all external contractors. In the coming weeks, you may encounter one or more external contractors being escorted to or from the lower levels of the facility. These men and women are part of Captain West's Somnus Initiative and as such are not to be interacted with by anyone but their handlers or the facility's commanding officers. Should you ever find any of these contractors without escort, it is your responsibility to immediately inform the base marines of the contractor's location. Under no circumstances should you attempt to detain or communicate with these individuals, Commander Gould. Okay, and September 10th, 2077, Intel Preservation Directive. To, from Commander Whitney Gould to all personnel. This is a reminder, any and all collected intelligence must be documented and deposited into the facility's archival system. If you have not yet received your training and use of the archives, please contact your immediate supervisor who will register you for the next available class, Commander Gould. And October 18th, 2077, Unauthorized Communication Policy. From Commander Whitney Gould to all subject Unauthorized Communication Policy to all Sugar Grove personnel. The work we do here is of incredibly sensitive nature. For this reason, all communications with or destined for sources outside of the facility must first be cleared by either myself or Captain West. Requests for information or project status from any outside sources, regardless of the rank claimed by the inquiring individual, must be forwarded directly to us. Anyone responding to such messages will be disciplined. You don't want to be the only one who lets intelligence fall into the enemy hands, do you? Commander Gould. Okay, let's, uh, okay, archives index. Okay, so yeah, this is just one where we can actually read these things. We can't actually click on these things individually. So we can see that Edgar Arson here was uh, part of the Union attendance rolls in March of 2075. A surveillance warrant was obtained on them on August 13th, 2075. They were monitoring their movements in August of 2075. Their financial documentation. An arrest warrant was prepared for them January 3rd, 2076. A death certificate was issued March 4th of 2076. 
Martin and Olivia Arson were adopted April 6th, 2076. I mean, that's kind of creepy, right? Evelyn Aberdeen, Chinese visa request from February 12th, 2075. Evelyn Aberdeen, surveillance warrant March 1st, 2075. You have to wonder the number of people that they surveilled and then had killed. We need the system access tape. There we go. External connection protocols. Initiate external connection. Okay. Let's find a place to hide. Robots are spinning up to defend the facility from us. But some of them work for Modus. Oh, good, that assault truck's on our side. Okay, things seem to have calmed down up there. Be yep. <laughs> All right, let's move up here. Collect Modus's lost data. Oh, let's get that before we leave. <laughs> uh, oh, is it up we, there? We, okay. We, we, we are watching. Good to know, Overroad, Mr. Getsy. Here we go. Collect Modus's lost data. Return the instructions to the White Spring. All right, we are not actually Protection done here at this facility just yet, so we are going to... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fast travel to this site. Okay, we're back here at the exterior of Sugar Grove, but what we're going to do is head around to the back. And uh, we got that key, and that's exactly what we need. That key from the server room, I mean. All right, so we head across the crowded parking lot here with its limos. That must have been here to pick up VIPs. Or maybe to bring them here. Because, I mean, it does have a full-scale bunker under this thing. And it even has, you know, bathrooms and beds. You'd have to assume that they might even have a, a good amount of supplies on hand. At least for maybe uh, some of the folks here. Alright, so... Note, we have another checkpoint back here. What do we have coming after us? Sounds like mole rats or rad rats are trying to kill me. Oh, there they go. All right, but again, we were already on the on the property, but there's another security checkpoint here. That's because there's another facility that they're guarding back in the back of this place. Let's loot some ammunition here. Okay, and let's scrap any junk we have. Okay, let's keep on moving. What the hell? Who's trying to kill me? Oh. Okay. Cultists, apparently. There we go. Let's go. Oh, and more rats. I was turning, trying to turn off my flashlight and uh, stopped doing that too quick and so just opened up the inventory. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Uh, access this. And another rat. Thank you for not making your presence known earlier. That was fun. Okay. Here we go. Now, I know you're probably thinking you didn't need a key to get in there. And that's true. You didn't need a key to get through that door. But you do need a key to get through this door. Okay. Welcome to the black site. That, uh, so that alert is coming from the other side. So yeah, it looks like it is, uh, red rats in here, not mole rats. But these, this is what we could hear from the other side when we were coming down in. Okay, there's a rad roach. No, rad rat pup. Okay. 
take a shower in here. If I'd acted faster, I could have closed that door and shot him through the grating, but oh well. False alarm! Stand down, people! Kitchen. There's a terminal there, we'll come back to that. Once I'm sure that we're not facing any more enemies in here. But you can definitely still hear rad rats. Brainwashing room, but again, we'll come back. Okay. Think that we're done. Yeah, because that's where we came down in. Okay. So we got a safe here. With some uh, technical data, some junk, and some armor. So we get the medical lab in here. Sorry about the... Uh, I'm going to turn down the sound so you don't have to hear the constant uh, alarm going off. But we got some good junk in here. So... I don't think this is likely here for legitimate medical reasons. I think this is so that they could perhaps implant things in people's bodies or do something like that to them. Because again, we have the brainwashing area where they'd sit down in these chairs, have all this crap going on to their head or something, and be forced to watch images go by on the screen. And there's also some ammo there, more ammo there. And right over here, the director's terminal. General notes. Need to cut down indoctrination and reprogramming time. Current averages are about three days. If we could get this average down to one day or to a matter of hours, it would greatly reduce suspicion. Until then, we need to continue to rely on individuals with no immediate family. Despite our original expectations, individuals with lower mental aptitude are actually worse for the program than more intelligent individuals because we still need to work within the confines of the human brain. Smarter people are better able to carry out orders without error and can improvise to a clue their purpose if they are caught. Factors other than intelligence seem to influence malleability. After what happened with Somnus Agent AJM-1068, it is evident that we need to speed up our progress on the ability to deprogram individuals. Okay, so, and that's this one right here. So remember that this one had an issue. Uh, DMS 746. The fact that Agent DMS 746 is a local park ranger should prove advantageous in his efforts to move around and not raise suspicion. However, I believe that he may be a bit hard of hearing. He understands orders more or less, but he does not always accurately recognize voices. I'm worried he may hear an order from someone not associated with the program, but who sounds similar, and divulge classified information. Note from September 21st, 2077, Agent DMS-746 did not return in a timely manner after a previous round of collection. Undercover agents were dispatched to find him. DMS-746 showed signs of confusion, likely due to a sustained concussion, but no recollection of his activities. We decided to decommission him for now, but keep him under close surveillance for any unexpected issues. This is HDR-242. Exhibit signs of resilience to reprogramming. Double next session. If she still manages to resist, a partial wipe may be in order. We can always drop her outside of her home, make it look like a late night bender. Her propensity for overindulging in alcohol is one of the reasons we chose her for this exact reason. Now that number right there, uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. This is the one though that had an issue. I can no longer in good conscience recommend the Somnus program for use in non-adult individuals. Even though AJM-1068 is an orphan and frequent runaway, there have been signs that reprogramming a developing mind may lead to adverse lifelong consequences. The good news is that it's highly effective. The bad news is that it works too well, and the subject has little ability to desire to do anything but follow explicit orders, which is fine for robots, but robots don't need to eat, sleep, or perform other biological functions. I've called for an acceleration on the deprogramming initiative. Oof. EFB-825. We need to take better care during the reprogramming process to not inhibit basic self-preservation instincts. Agent EFB-828 came back bleeding, covered in lacerations, and missing an arm after an apparent bear attack, blissfully unaware that anything was wrong. While it's good to know that this could have interesting implications for frontline military forces, it does us no good to have a trail of blood lead to our back door. 
Agents were sent to scrub the trail and make sure no one traces this back to us. And SEL-1249. SEL-1249 is a self-disciplined, avid hiker, so no one questions her frequent disappearances. We can use her to collect data from the wooded mountainous areas nearby. On a trial basis, we have been experimenting with inserting a wide range of combat tactics, mostly revolving around martial arts. SEL-1249 has shown much promise in accepting these techniques, completely unaware to her conscious self. Indeed, it appears that SEL-1249 managed to foil a bank robbery by employing hand-to-hand -hand combat with no recollection of the incident. Luckily, the official newsprint story attributes it to a sudden instinctual rush of adrenaline triggered by the stress of the situation. So yes, they were creating sleeper agents here in the Somnus Initiative. That's what this whole thing was about here. Did I just... Yes, I just saw a... Uh, a uh, Pip Boy here. Or a Vault Boy, whatever. That's what I meant. Vault Boy. <laughs> Did, did my armor just break by picking up the pit boy? I don't... I don't know. Anyway, uh, we got multiple keys here. Cell B9AX, VF, sorry, V5XF, and A6KH. Along with that, we have some 10 mil rounds. I'll grab that. And it looks like we've got a safe over here. Some ammo, and some junk and a weapon. In fact, that pistol looks to be better than... Well, it's at least better than the weapon I'm currently carrying. A6KH, we have that silky. This is where they kept people for those three days when they were not being brainwashed. B9AX. We got a Salisbury steak. Some medics in that Kim box. Let's see, this one requires key. We don't have that one yet. And I'll show you where to get that one here in just a second. But continue coming around. V5XF. Okay, we got another mattress here. Another toilet and a sink. And W9FFZ. We have another med box with some medex, cap stash, and a mattress. Okay, and I think that there's just a simple walkway uh, up here to where you can look down into these cells and they could observe the individuals in their cells. Along with that, we have this security gate going into this storage area where we have a fusion core, a uh, cooler with some food in it. Alright, now I told you there's that door there that we don't have the key for. And I also told you that I talk tell you more about one of the individuals that is uh, found in that computer. And that cell is specifically this one right here. I'm going to show you right now where to find the key for this. Alright, so we are traveling to Huntersville, which is right down here. All right, we're on the uh, the southeast side of Huntersville here. Now we're gonna try to sneak around this place as much as possible because I'd prefer not to fight these super mutants as much as possible. So, <laughs> watch out for the minefield. <laughs> All right, we're on the west side of Huntersville. And we got, uh, looks like a mine exploded there. We got this house here. This is the one that has that rented terminal in it that, uh, has that woman who's slowly turning into a super mutant, recounting her, her experience. We climb the tree. Drop down. And, uh, where is it? It's under the bed. There it is. Cell key W9FZ. Let's take that and head back to the black site. Okay, we're back. Now, remember, again, this terminal entry for this one. Where it's, uh, no, wait, that's the child. It's this one. Okay, where it says here that this person has a uh, propensity for overindulging in alcohol. Now, there's nothing in there that specifically says that this person was the person who lived in this cell. But... The fact of the matter is that what happened in Huntersville with everyone turning into super mutants because they were drinking the local water supply has led me to believe that the reason that she was turning perhaps a bit more slowly than her neighbors is that she was over imbibing in alcohol. And the fact that we found this cell key under her door leads me to believe that this was her cell here. Okay, here's the actual cell key. 
So this opens the one that we could not yet open. Uh, I made a mistake there. I assumed that we had not picked up that key yet. I forgot that when we went through Huntersville, we actually did already pick up the key. So yeah, that key, the key to this room was just sitting on that shelf uh, in that other room. Anyway, we already opened up her her key, her uh, her bedroom in here with her key. Um, and so again, I think because the person took a bit longer to turn, we know that they were perhaps drinking some more. And because they were drinking more, I think that we can, uh, in terms of alcohol, I mean, we can say that potentially they were that specific sleeper agent referenced in that note. Anyway, I think it's just interesting to note that there is a, a sleeper agent that was living in Huntersville that was uh, being um, reprogrammed here at the black site. So we're done here. Let's head to the White Spring. This time we can actually just take the elevator down. Okay, and return the instructions. Deposit the instructions in the collector against the far wall. There we go. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. Not sure why she just started running. Anyway, we will leave here and we will head on over to... Where is it? Oh. Is it telling me to... No. Oh, that's right. For some reason, they... <laughs> the uh, cursor that it gives you is just telling you to leave the building. Anyway, we're going to be heading on over to some place that's right over in here. It's the National uh, Radio Astronomy Research Center or something like that. Anyway, though... This has been the Resolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.